You know, I've always been into philanthropy, but I've always usually refrained from doing stuff like making donations to World Wildlife Fund and Greenpeace and all of these, what we call in Thailand a Moon Leniti, a foundation or a charity. Because I once tried to, um, so how, how, how can you otherwise practice philanthropy to help humankind? to be free of all of the the terrible horrors and, and, and sufferings we have to endure, some which we cause ourselves by war and persecuting each other and religious jihads and all sorts of crusades. Don't just say jihad, say crusade, because actually it was the Christians who first went off bothering everybody in the European side of it anyway. So um, how do you practice philanthropy if you don't want to support these funds and why not support these funds so first i'll go into why not supporting the fund why i don't support them because when i studied up on how to open a non-profit foundation a non-profit um registered non-profit the whole explanation the whole dossier on how to do it underlying it not saying it but actually underlying it it was written for somebody, for the reader, assuming what is in the heart of the reader is to actually create a profession for themselves and for whoever else will be employed in the foundation and to actually, I call, already call that profitable, that if the end of the business month, the company itself doesn't have a penny profit, but everybody who is in it has made thousands and thousands of dollars for themselves as their money for their time, I consider that a, a business. It is a business. And this is a job creation scheme and a business scheme to feed oneself. But just don't let the company have any profits and invest any potential profits to make sure there's not a penny left over at the end of the fiscal year, of the tax year. So that if not, they take your company or company, your non-profit organization away from you. You have to keep it non-profit. But so long as you make sure there's not a penny left over. So you say, OK, we've got uh, $10 million left over. We'll start a new project to help these people. And we'll put my brother in and we'll put my friends in and we'll give them a very high wage to make the sure there's no profit left over and if there's so much profit we don't know what to do with it we'll spend it all on advertising and how many expensive adverts have you seen in the cinema for the world world wildlife fund lots of them and on the internet and all of these charities are advertising have you noticed that or well, when you're donating what you're doing is paying for their advertising more than you're paying for the sacks of rice that are actually landing on the plates of uh, children in somalia because it's not getting there. I live in Thailand and I see stuff on the markets for sale that were actually sent by people who give their old clothes away in Germany. And I once went out with somebody whose parents had a company who actually lived from collecting donation clothes to send to poor children in other countries. And I always scratch my head thinking out well, how come they run a truck and they run all of this business from it? How are they making money from it? Well, I still don't know, but obviously they did. So obviously are these donations and getting all the way to Africa, there's a lot of logistics along the way where people are actually charging their funds for it. Who's paying for it? I don't know. <laughs> the taxpayer in the end, you are. You are paying for it, which is okay, I suppose. But anyway... I don't support these kinds of philanthropy because I'm not sure that the person who needs it on the other end is actually getting it and how much of it is just a tricky business. I suspect most of it in this world, considering how immoral many people are, what's in the human heart that is unpurified and unenlightened, which means almost all of us, then you can assume that everybody's being tempted on a lesser or greater degree. Everybody, including ourselves, unless we are enlightened and purified in our hearts. Mm. <clears throat> some people are purifying it and some people are becoming more and more pure and some people never seem to get too corrupted and stay very pure mm. to a human extent. Look at Mother Teresa and you can see a lot of people 
who renounce things for the welfare of others. Anyway, how can we do philanthropy? Well, I think that even if these non-profit organizations do help, all they do is help to stem the tide. So it's like as if you build a sandcastle and the water in the moat is leaking into the castle grounds. So you keep stuffing the hole full of sand, but it just keeps breaking a hole in again and trickling through. And all you can do is you keep repeatedly stuffing a hole in the sand, but you're not making this, you, you aren't stopping the, making a dam to stop, re redirect the water to a different place. So you're not stopping it at the source. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, how do we stop it at the source? Hmm? Instead of stemming the tide, we stop it at the source, and this is how we can help philanthropy, by helping projects that change human consciousness. Because until human greed and human, the abuse, the internet could be used for wonderful things, instead it's used as a, personal data stealing and advertising sales scam. Everything is designed on getting your consumer data and selling it or using it to sell to advertisers. Facebook does it, Google does it, YouTube do it, Tumblr does it, everybody does it, Instagram do it, which belongs to Facebook now. And uh, what's in the hearts of people doesn't cause apps and websites and the internet to develop and the world, what's in the hearts of people with finance and industry and even non-profit charitable organizations <laughs> which are supposed to be philanthropy, philanthropical, philanthropic are not really. They are driven by greed and personal gain and that's all that drives them in most cases. Now I would say there are a few cases where some people have risked everything and and I mean everything and they they have succeeded and they have personal gain from what they succeeded in but that their project are for the good of humanity and will change benefit humanity and perhaps even change human consciousness and so I would like to mention an example would be Elon Musk who has succeeded he he invented paypal he he wrote the paypal script paypal.com the online world's most biggest online payment gateway and he sold it for millions and millions hundreds of millions of dollars when he was a kid and he used that money to create the tesla electric car which is now making the oil industry and the and the oil petroleum motor car industry poop their pants and Ford are even now following suit and making an electric car because it goes faster, it's more powerful, it's got self-driving operative functionality and all sorts of stuff and it's a really nice car and he's then used his money for that which he nearly lost because nobody believed in him investing in stuff that nobody believed in too. So with that car, he's also destroying a monopolized industry of the petroleum industry. And if he destroys his, those fossil fuel industries or makes them change and makes the world not need them so much, yes, he will create new industries, but ones which are sustainable and which don't destroy the environment. And so he's saving the world both from a uh, new world order monopoly and... Uh, the wrong kind of new world order, because there will be a new world order. It's just a matter of it's a utopian one or a Orwellian one, like in George Orwell's 1984 or in Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, or if it's going to be a golden age one. And that depends on a lot of things and on various people and the support of humanity to those people. Elon Musk is one of those people, I believe, who needs support. So I'd rather donate to Elon Musk's projects, even though they're profitable companies, because they nearly haven't made profit. The, pro the, the Elon Musk's intention was not to have a profitable company. Of course, you have to do that anyway to make the project work. But his goal was to make humanity a spacefaring race and to make our energy sustainable until we can become that. 
and so he's invented the electric car and the solar house which you can get off the power grid with with your roof and your walls they look more beautiful than any kind of normal roof tiles and wall panels and he's making it so it can be even cheaper than doing it the other way the normal way and if you have both the wall panels and the roof panels you can actually go off the grid and have your own self-sustained electricity and you don't have to pay any monopolized governments or energy suppliers companies so it puts the poops up them and it and it changes the world it makes us more independent and autonomous as individuals and as families and as people as townspeople or whatever how, however you want to group yourselves into individuals or groups but keep it small because it doesn't work when you try and make it one central government controls a country is that big as you can't mm. so so to f his third project was the X SpaceX where he has uh, created a rocket ship that can land again without throwing off jettisoning its uh, parts yeah, so it's sustainable and reusable and he's used NASA uses him all the time and various other companies I think the Europe I'm not sure but uh, a, a lot of space agencies and companies use him to put satellites up in the air and he brings the ship back and with between him and Richard Branson I'll speak less of because I don't know if he's worth supporting or not but his pro some of his projects are very good perhaps just profitable but very good they happen to help humanity um, is to make outer space a public domain and open and visitable to any person not just to governments and so he's opening up space as the next frontier the next wild west to all people and not make it the domain of governments and he's making sustainable energy possible and freeing us from the monopolies and also from having our own sustainable energy and not having to to be more sovereign individuals autonomous and not and for the falls of the monetary system which i would have to have another talk about from uh, a book called the sovereign individual which is about how more and more individual individuals today are getting off the monetary system and using bitcoin and using different methods mostly living in other countries from those of their birth and using the internet to as a uh, to make their money or make their way and finally the more people that do that they will cause the monetary system and the banking system to fall apart because they won't have people using it anymore and um, a more self-governed system should arise from that but for this to arise we need a change in consciousness and we need to stop the uh, dishonest or self-centered intentions and acts from arising when we develop the way our technology and our evolution and the new professions and the new sciences we bring in and how we use them how we use the new things appliances we have brought in for humanity such as the internet telephony uh, um, the automobile the aeroplane the ability to fly in the air and all of these things yeah communications computing and that how they we are, they're being used in it commercially it's not it's taking advantage of each other and it's based on abuse of each other it's not based on growing as fast as we can through mutually assisting each other without the hidden desire for profit hidden agendas asking you for your telephone number on your guarantee card when you buy a microwave oven the guarantee card asks you for your email and your phone number and you write it down thinking that's just for their database but the next day your phone starts getting SMS messages with adverts advertisements in them that's because you filled the form in when you bought the microwave oven so they're taking your data deceiving you into thinking you have to fill it in and taking your information without your permission or knowledge and they're using it how they want to sell to advertisers that's completely the point is it's not that it's disgusting the point is that 
we have this thing in our hearts, humans, all of us, and it's called wrong view, it's unenlightened and it's impure. And that to stop the problems of hunger, war, and all of these things, which and economic um, bullying of countries and the imbalance of uh, wealth and poverty over the planet, there's no point in donating all your money to the World Wildlife Fund and the this for children and that for animals because you're just stuffing mud in the hole to stop the water coming out for a while but the problem's still there there are still do dishonest people at the root of it creating new cons people want to start new wars to sell new weapons or to steal more oil from a country that's not theirs or whatever yeah or cause an imbalance in politics so that another country will suffer from it and all of this kind of thing it's really not nice and so, and the people who have the power to do this, it doesn't matter which people they are because all people are tempted within their hearts because we have impurity. And so we have to donate and to help projects which will eventually change the consciousness of mankind. And I think Elon Musk is going the right way, although his projects don't directly change the consciousness of man mankind, rather open up and change our world and how we live in it and how dependent we are on governments or not it makes us free but thereafter use, living in uh, an environment that is healthy and that doesn't destroyed by industry and destroyed by, by our poisons and our chemicals and which is sustainable and to make things much cheaper and available to the public even space travel and to have free energy it will make us see our role in Mother Nature and look after the planet more and we will slowly develop an auspicious and purer mind without a monetary system. When that has fallen, the, the type of greed will be much more basic. It will not be so complex and hard to get rid of from the heart. The type of greed there will be more for how much food is on your plate and stuff, but it won't be for how to do mathematical banking tricks and stuff like that. And so, I would say, uh, I personally, if I would donate to anybody, I'd donate to Elon Musk or somebody similar. I personally think the guy is one of the first guys with really good intentions and a good ideas and a pair of balls to do it and risk everything and he's done three things not one thing so i think he's much more i'd support him before i support the world wildlife fund but it always help an animal in distress but i'm not giving money to some dubious uh, non-profit organizations who will take the money and well wildlife spend 150 million dollars a year i believe i was told but I would have to check up the actual data to confirm that. But something like that every year on advertising. Just think how many animals they could save with that. Anyway, so that is uh, philanthropy, my style through my personal view. That's Jan Spencer, once more signing off.